In today's episode, we're going to consider a scenario where you are trying to measure the voltage of a signal in a circuit. But the, the signal is, a, is an audio frequency or maybe even a radio frequency signal. So you think, well, I'll just grab my multimeter and make a measurement and that will be that. So sometimes you can do that and you get the measurement that you were expecting and you never question it. But sometimes when you do that, you get a measurement that you weren't expecting and you think, well, that's great. It's not what I was expecting. Something's wrong. Now I've got to go figure out what's wrong. Whenever you come up against these situations, it's always important to stop and think and consider what might be wrong with the picture. Lots of things could be wrong with the picture. And what we're going to talk about today has to do with the frequency range over which AC voltmeters actually produce accurate measurements. In general, uh, for any meter, there's a range in which the readings are going to be accurate in terms of different frequencies. Then there'll be areas outside that range where you have reduced accuracy and then finally total lack of accuracy. And the best way to understand these ranges is to read the manual, but uh, sometimes you might not have that manual or you might not have access to it. So there's an important question here as to whether or not you can characterize the bandwidth of a particular multimeter experimentally, just with equipment that you're likely to have on the bench. And the answer to that is yes, uh, you can. It's not that difficult. And that's what we're going to do in, in the video. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to uh, start off with a, uh, a signal and we're going to vary the frequency of that signal. And we're going to do it from a frequency range of a few hertz up through about two megahertz. And we're going to set up the amplitude of that in, in a way so that uh, we get a constant amplitude sine wave. We're going to <clears throat> make that uh, amplitude to be 3 volts peak to peak, uh, which will work out to be about 1.06 volts RMS. We're uh, then going to uh, terminate that in a pure resistive 50 ohm load. And then in parallel with that load, we're going to hook up several meters, voltmeters. Some of them will be digital voltmeters. Some of them will be analog. And we're uh, also going to uh, have a frequency counter and an oscilloscope in the circuit just so that we can uh, understand that signal and make sure that it's, it's, it's uh, maintaining a constant amplitude as we change the frequency. There are three uh, general types of meters that we're going to look at. First, uh, we're going to look at three kind of modern contemporary meters, two ampro meters and a BK precision. Then we're going to look at a couple of older meters, uh, a Tektronix and an old Fluke that uh, came out of uh, uh, kind of the time range of 1970s to 1980s vintage. And then we're going to look at two analog meters, uh, a vacuum tube voltmeter and a VOM. And these were on the market, or these were marketed uh, anywhere from kind of the 1950s to 1960s time frame. So here's a, a picture of our signal on, on an oscilloscope. And the frequency of this sine wave is 60 hertz got it coming out of a function generator. And I know from the frequency counter that, uh, that it's attached to it that it's at uh, 60 hertz. And so what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, point out that uh, each graticule is uh, 0.5 volts. So the amplitude of this is 1.5, where the peak-to-peak -peak voltage is 3 volts. And so this is at 60 hertz. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the frequency by a factor of 10, to 600 hertz. And you can see that the peak-to-peak -peak voltage hasn't changed. And next I'm going to go to uh, 6,000 hertz or 6 kilohertz. And again, the envelope is the same. And now I'm going to go to 60 kilohertz. And again, the envelope uh, remains unchanged at uh, 3 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. And then finally at 600 kilohertz. And then lastly, I'm going to go up to 2 megahertz, which I'm doing right now. And you can see that maybe the envelope has changed just a tad. So we've determined that the output of the frequency generator is uh, very flat in terms of providing a constant amplitude signal in the frequency ranges that we're going to test. Here are the five digital multimeters that we're going to test. We'll do the VOM and the VTVM uh, right after we consider the digital multimeters. At 60 hertz, you can see uh, all the DMMs are in very, very good agreement 
with one another and very close to the expected 1.06 volts uh, RMS reading. As I go up from 60 hertz to 600 hertz, again, all the, the meters are in, in very good agreement and are giving accurate readings. But when we go to 6,000 hertz or 6 kilohertz, you can see that uh, the three of the meters uh, are beginning to change and, and show inaccurate readings. So on the right here, you have the, uh, the old Fluke 8010A. It still uh, is giving a, a very, very accurate uh, reading. And then uh, on the far left, the red meter 1.06 volts is the Amprobe uh, AM160A. But the uh, Model 57, uh, just to its right, the BK Precision uh, there, the blue and white meter, and then the Tektronics uh, meter are all showing you know, pretty inaccurate uh, readings at this point. If I go up to 60 kilohertz, <clears throat> the situation just gets worse. While the uh, meter on the left, the Amprobe AM160, is uh, still holding in there, all the rest of the meters have changed. The Model 570, the BK Precision, and the Tektronics are, are all now uh, pretty highly inaccurate and the uh, fluke is just beginning to change uh, uh, a little bit. As I go up to 600 kilohertz now, uh, all the meters are uh, showing, uh, showing changes. The fluke is falling down. The uh, other meters are all changing readings, and even the Amprobe AM160 is showing uh, some in inaccuracies. Uh, it's now reading 0 0.94 volts. Looking at the VOM and the VTVM, uh, what we're going to see is as we change the frequencies, we're going to see a lot of, of differences uh, compared to the digital multimeters. At 60 hertz, uh, you can see the vacuum tube voltmeter actually reads 1.06 volts RMS, which is remarkable that it's that accurate. And, and in fact, it's, it's probably an accident that it's, it's calibrated that well on this particular scale. The VOM is reading about 0.8 volts uh, RMS. Uh, VOMs are not noted for their great accuracy, particularly this model. That's what we have at 60 hertz. As we go up to 600 hertz now, neither meter really changes very much or changes absolutely in, in a negligible way. What we're going to see is as we uh, increase the frequency by another factor of 10 to 6 kilohertz, that Again, nothing changes. The vacuum tube voltmeter might be up to just shy of 1.08 volts. As we go to 60 kilohertz, we see very little change. And as we go to 600 kilohertz, again, we see very little change. This is very surprising to me. Vacuum tube voltmeters are, are in fact, noted uh, for having substantial bandwidth. Uh, but I didn't realize that that was true for uh, VOMs as well. Well, of course, you can do that over and over again for many different frequencies. And instead of doing that live on camera, I've uh, gone ahead and done that. And the resulting data are summarized on this plot. So the different colors represent the different meters. The uh, horizontal axis denotes frequency. Note that it's a logarithmic axis. So uh, 1e to the 0, 1 is 10 hertz. The uh, 1e to the 3 is 1 kilohertz, e to the 5 is 100 kilohertz, and uh, up at the very end here is our 2 megahertz reading. The uh, vertical axis denotes uh, voltage, red, on the meter, and the red dotted line is the, the actual value of the signal, 1.06 volts RMS. And you can see that, that we've got, actually got a very well-defined bandwidth for all the meters. Uh, not all the meters have the same bandwidth. Uh, and in particular, three meters seem to uh, do, uh, uh, don't span the entire audio frequency uh, range, which is you know, 20, uh, 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Uh, and that would be the, the BK Precision, the Amprobe 570, and the Tektronics, the old Tektronics DMM. They're very flat in part of that uh, Part of the audio frequency spectrum, but they don't span the whole thing. Three multimeters do span the audio frequency range of the spectrum, and that's the, the Amprobe 160, the vacuum tube voltmeter, and the VOM. Uh, and actually, the Fluke it does as well. So the Fluke is the uh, gray uh, trace, and the Amprobe 160 model is the black trace. 
what you can see is for the VOM and the VTVM have uh, very flat responses on al almost all of the frequencies that we were able to test. We weren't able to get down very far uh, below the uh, 20 hertz range. Uh, we were only able to get two meters to really respond in that range. That was the vacuum tube voltmeter and the Ampro 160. It might be a little bit more insightful to look at a, a different type of plot and that's what I've shown in, in this graph. This is the same horizontal axis and the same color coding for all the meters, but now the vertical axis is the percent error. So again, the red dotted line down here would be 0% error. And you can see that now that uh, you know below, below um, 20 kilohertz or so, that uh, the meters I was able to get readings on uh, have substantial error, 10 to 20% error. It's a very, very, uh, very little error until you get uh, towards the edge of the bands for the, the, the different meters, and then you incur 10, 20, 30 percent error. Uh, and by the time you get up to two megahertz, you know all, all of them have uh, have uh, very poor error, except for the VOM and the vacuum tube voltmeter. So a very reasonable question to ask at this point is, well, okay, you have different design specs for different meters. Are our readings consistent with those design specs? And the answer to that question is yes, uh, for, for all of the meters that I could get the design specs for. What we just showed is uh, very consistent for what we found in the manuals. All of these meters either met or exceeded the design specs uh, for this particular low voltage range, uh, you know, one, one volt. I couldn't find bandwidth information for the old triplet, which isn't necessarily surprising. But, uh, but again, we noted that it was very flat across the entire frequency range that we tested. So I think there are some takeaways from this exercise. And one of those is that, uh, you know, not all voltmeters are created equal. They're not all the same. And that can be really important if you're using that meter inappropriately. If you're trying to measure a signal outside of the designed bandwidth or the designed frequency response of that meter, you will get a reading and uh, you may not realize that that reading is inaccurate by design. So when using a meter or any instrument for that matter to make a measurement, it's really important that you understand the limitations of that instrument. Uh, but it's not all bad news. You can do experiments such as uh, you know, what we've just done in this video to understand the frequency response of, of a multimeter. And the last thing I'd like to point out is that you know, just because a multimeter is new or digital, it doesn't mean that the readings that it gives you are in any sense truer necessarily than an older meter or one with an analog movement. I hope you found this interesting and if you have ideas uh, you know please leave comments below. If you like this video please give it a thumbs up and thank you very much.